Hello, my name is Cal Moliné from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here at the Compass with my girlfriend, Bugatti Varen, to spread the message of freedom. Uh, so stay tuned and hopefully you enjoy this content of videos and please share and subscribe if you can. Take good care. And that's the hidden violence and immorality of government and that only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of use of violence to solve any problems. That's why everybody hates America now, dude. Yeah, yeah, pretty everyone, much. Everyone just thinks America's a bully and it's like, yeah, just, and now it's just going to the toilet and then America's just gonna get screwed over because everyone's just gonna be like, screwed us over, why should we be yeah. like, like you guys? Right, yeah, and for me, I'm, and, and that's what, uh, you look at America, America is nothing but uh, an arbitrary line on a piece of paper. Right? You can't show me your friends, your family, even Americans without showing me individual people. And that's kind of the point of the direction I want to go. To show that it's only individual people exist. Move the border lines, move the idea of countries because it's, it's the people who run those countries, the government who, who, who is in control of that, who kind of makes us everyone look bad. And yeah. make, associates the actions like Obama drone bombing children overseas, associate thinking that this is everyone here who, who supports that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, so what are your thoughts? What else uh, do you guys think about uh, that the head and bind? So, so government compromises are own moral values that we're already against so it tricks us and to supporting that that which we're already against in our lives you know you look at the reality of the situations that they have a monopoly on law they have a monopoly on security on judges monopoly on courts on roads on even money so you can't cancel unsubscribe or go or have the freedom of opportunity to create a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people who are paying those salaries yeah. right we can still have a military we can still have security but unfortunately we're forced to have this one yeah, right? Yeah. You can't cancel. You can't unsubscribe like Netflix last year. Try to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh, fuck that. Cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. Right? <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, man, that's true. Guess you had a really good point. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, so, I'm part of an organization called Liberate RVA. It's pretty much uh, liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. Not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other. You know, the violence is on the children, including spanking. That only teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems in this world when we grow up. Well, no, spanking, no, nah, nah. Well, I mean, you can't show me children without showing me individual people. I mean, it's wrong to hit another person, then well, it still be wrong well, to hit a child. You, you have to teach a child. You can teach a child. Well, it's not just like hit them just for like dumb reasons, like... Well, you shouldn't be hitting anyone, right? They're still a person, yeah. right? Well, well, they're I, trying I, to learn, they're trying to I, explore this world. You, 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 then the person should find creative ways yeah, to explain but, this situation. But if you don't spam them, and they don't know what's wrong, they just like become like spoiled and ever, everything. Well, th th then that's a lack of parenting. Care. And they don't get scared of their parents and like... Why would you want to be scared of your no, parents? No, like, that's, like, you want to kind is of Is that what like, you want to, well, that's, for, for me, the time for this, this is why we have a government. That kind of authority, like a child's trying to okay, ask but questions. Yeah, if you want to hit your kids, it's your choice, not the government. The government. Well, it's, it shouldn't be anyone's choice. You shouldn't be hitting any person. Because yeah. there's that still individual, no, but right? It's like, oh, yeah. You're not raising a dog. You're raising I, a human I, I being. Know, I know, but like, still, it's like still a child. You need to teach it how to be like, Ple a, yeah, a they teach it peacefully. Teach, the child is nothing but a sponge. Okay. They, abs okay. they okay. absorb. No, I, I think yeah, that's yeah. true. But like, after a certain age, you shouldn't hit your kids. You shouldn't. But like, but like, up to like, I'm not talking about like smack in the face. I'm talking about like maybe like just a spanking or something. Yeah. For, for why? What? Give like me just, a reason why. Like, just think, like if they do something like this, like just what? bad, and you tell them not, it's not good. Like they you give do. them like three warnings. If they don't do it or whatever, or they just like like don't do it and they just do it worse or whatever, then you just you gotta do something. You well, 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 then, then you don't think that because the it's child. Like, it's like law. If you don't, if it's like yeah, laws. Okay, if 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 you like make a law and you don't enforce, it, everyone's gonna do it. Well, the thing is, with, with the law, you have no choice. You ha that's not a voluntary, there's no polycentric legal system. The child didn't choose to have you as a parent. The, if the child could choose, I'm pretty sure the child will choose someone who actually would take the time to explain the child, who has no understanding of this role, to try to teach the child what's going on. Instead of someone said, you know what, you don't get it for the third time, then you're gonna get hit. You know, that's kind of terrifying yeah. to kind of grow up with that. You, you look at the studies, the science is out there, even, you know, it, it knocks off a few points. You so, know, you only teach a child that when I grow up, it's okay for me to hit someone if they don't understand me. So the kids who are like growing up now, who have no, who have not been getting hit because like all this stuff. Because if you hit your kids and you're a bad parent, and all this. Look at the kids who are now like, 21st century, like, like, like three years from now, like, like three years ago, and look at the kids now compared to like the how kids were before. All right. They're yeah, way more way disrespectful. More yeah, they're like, yeah, and because, okay. yeah, over 90% yeah. of the parents still spank their kids. That's why. The majority of the people, the kids that grows up today Dude, okay, and stuff like that okay. are still being hit. So it's that like hasn't been much of a time, change. Kids, like, parents have been, like, hitting the kids and, like, they've had respect. Now that it's like, you're not allowed to Respect for who? Like, just respect, just, like, in for, general. Well, why would you hit a kid for, in the first one? Why would you assault a, a child? It's kind of funny because you hit an adult, you call it assault. But if you hit a kid, you call it spanking. They call it a different word. That's no, kind of no, like. No, no, that's different. You can't hit someone else's kid. Well, why, why can't you hit someone because they're taller? 
you make this arbitrary preference because they're taller, you can't hit them. But when they're smaller than you and you're 10 times their size, it's okay to when hit someone smaller. When you're teaching them how to become an adult, that's different. Is that how you like to be taught? You like someone to hit you if you don't understand? No, no, no. That's it. You give them three warnings. If, so okay, if you don't understand, all right, so that's, that's a fair enough. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's okay for me to hit you then. No, they understand. No, no, I'm talking about you because you're yeah. saying this is, so you have to apply this universally. Otherwise, this is a preference. Okay, so you said, what was your question? So if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's okay for me to hit you. If you don't understand what I'm saying, if it takes if it takes more than three times, you're saying it's okay for anyone to hit you because you don't understand. Okay, like the government, if you smoke weed, like if you get caught three offenses, you go to jail. It's pretty much the same concept. Well, it's it's, it's a victimless crime. Who are you hurting? It's just a, it's a I'm not, You're hurting yourself. I'm, right, not, so you, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying. Right, I'm just saying it's wrong to hit anyone. I'm trying to universalize it. I'm trying to say, let's just let go of the situation. Violence only begets more violence. You only teach a child to create no, an authority I'm, figure I'm not for. About, like, Violence, like punching the face. I'm not talking about like hardcore violence. Well, the thing is, even striking, even hitting the child on the buttocks, that knocks off acute points. The studies have shown over 93% of the scientific community agrees. Even hitting a child, it has to be traumatic enough for the child. Anything verbal, abusive, sexual, physical, yeah, yeah, knocks off yeah, acute that's, points. That's, tra that's traumatic, dude. That's like when you're right, talking about like, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So imagine a small child trying to learn this world, and you're a ten times their size, and then you're hitting them because they're trying yeah, to yeah, understand. You're not, you're not going well, can, well, give me, give me an example why you. Would hit a child. Okay, let's say, say you let's say you explain let's, everything let's say you, to that child. Like what? Let's say, let's give me an example. Your son curses or calls someone fat or something like that. Okay, call someone fat. Okay, okay, you tell them no, don't do that. And they keep doing it. Okay, stop doing that. Okay, they keep doing it. Okay. You're gonna eventually lose your okay, stop doing that. <laughs> all right. So all you say is don't do that. Don't do that. You don't say. Look, just, if you, you no, say you these words, them, you explain to them. What, what do you? How, how would you explain to someone who's that to call hurts someone fat? It's feelings if you call them fat. It's not nice of you to do that. Okay, the child doesn't. Understand. What, what does that mean? Hurt the feelings? Can you give me an example of what hurting uh, someone's feelings is? Because a child, for them, that's just words. You have to convey because they, they're, they're trying to. Their brain is so developing. So, so you would never hit a kid. I would never hit a kid. But your own kid. I would never hit my own kid. No. Why, why would I want to? I have, I have a plurality of non-violent solutions I could apply to help my child learn. And it, 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 the child didn't choose me to work. have a child. I'm not saying... It never works. No, it does work sometimes. But in what case? Our, our, our parents, yeah, our parents, we don't, look, we, we don't hate them, we don't, we don't have traumatic anything. Alright, so you guys turn out, so how would you say you guys turn out? You guys good? turn out good, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll you just work. good? Just we okay? Know the, we know the difference between right and wrong. Alright, well, unfortunately, I'm we, sorry we to we hear don't. you didn't say you turn out fantastic yeah. and great and marvelous and like Dude. such wonderful human beings, but you turn out, oh, okay, good, no, okay. No, kids, so that's the result of your parents beating you, you turn out okay. Dude, you turn out beat. good. I see that, like, no. It gives us spanking every now and then, every time we did something like horrible. Yeah. Not like Did every you? time we did something. What, what, like, what, what did you do? Juice. You, you dropped a glass of juice on accident and you, that no. deserves for you to get hit? No, no, not no, on no. accident. It's say like, my mom told me not to, not to write out, draw on the wall. I went and drew on the wall and she like, gave me a little spanking just so, to tell me, so I wouldn't do it again. So she get a piece of paper to explain like, look, you put it on the wall, it's, it's like, hard for it's, you it's, to, to erase on there, trying to explain to you because you don't know. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're a yeah, yeah. So you don't hit a child. No, you try to find different ways to help communicate to the child. They keep doing it. Okay, once you like give them like... Look, tell me, telling a child, hey, don't write on the wall. It's not keep doing. That's not finding other solutions. That's just saying, okay, you do what I say or they else. They're they not trying to, you're not even explaining. You need to kind of like put like a little fear in them so they know like, not like fear, but like you have to like put like something in them. Love, compassion, no, no, trust me. Yeah, that too, but... You need that, that's what's going to no, do it. you have to it. put them in there so they, so they know not to do bad things. Well, they don't know it's a bad thing because yeah, exactly. you haven't explained so them. The well, then thing. if a child wrote on my wall, I say, look, thing. obviously you like to color, you like to draw, you have this artistic sense, so let's get some paper, let's let's have a different way you can draw. And what if they keep drawing? They wouldn't. Why, why would they? Why would they? If I gave them because a different area. Because they like to be. All right, so they're a child. Okay, all right, then it's, they write on a the wall, then I then I, I put them in a room with a lot of papers so they can draw on that. I take them to an okay. art exhibit so okay. they can okay. do it on a canvas. I find a different way they can have more fun to drawing and expressing that in a different medium than me having to get to that point. What if you don't have all the money for that? What if you don't have the supplies? What if crayons and pieces of paper? I don't know. So, uh, I'll borrow from a friend. I say, hey, my kid just drawing my wall. I need some help. Uh, I, I, I have a community. It's like, all right, you know, here's some pieces okay, of let's paper and some crayons. Okay, kids are these days. Our uh, kids are we're back then. Okay. The kids now who have not been being are, are just like self violent. That's not true. All of the, uh, most of them, a lot more, large majority of American families still beat their kids. Over 95% of them still beat their kids, especially when they're just a few months old. So no, not 95%. Yes, yeah, so there's a science are out there. Yeah, here, I, here. I'll, I have some uh, piece of parenting pamphlets if you guys would like. 
No, that stuff is very important because the thing is, we have to be against all the, the oldest violence because it only teaches a child to, to create the projection of a government. For example, when a child's trying to understand this world and the parent says, you know, because I said so, you know, because I'm your father. And then that's the only thing the child learns is to respect authority and not to ask questions. So of course, when you grow up, you never question government because it's another kind of authority that people, that's kind of presented and enforced so upon gonna, you when you grow up. So you're gonna, what do you call it? Raise people who don't follow any laws? Raise people who don't follow any laws? No, we can have rules. Do we just don't need political they... rulers. We can have rules. We just don't need political rulers. We can have communities of preferences. We can have peaceful, voluntary communities. You know, uh, the language of force that you teach to, to a child is, is, is alien until you start hitting them, and then they learn that language themselves. You know, you don't grow up learning Mandarins, ma Mandarin out of nowhere, right? You know, a child is nothing but a sponge. They absorb their cultural surroundings, and like a mirror, they reflect yeah. that back. You know, uh, I mean, if you guys would like, I have a lot of information you guys would be curious to, to look into, especially the peace of parenting aspect of it. So this philosophy is called anarchy. Yeah. Anarchy means, by definition, without rulers. We can have rules. Anarchy? Anarchy. Like uh, science means anions and cations, and without, archy means rulers. Anarchy is like a government with no rules or whatever. Well, it means, well, government is... with no rules. Yeah, but no, it means a society with rules. It means a society without political rulers. Like ANS means with anions and cations, like in science, without. Archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, anarchy means without rulers. We can have rules. We just don't need political rulers arbitrarily dictating our lives how so best you, it should be lived. So you think this country should be anarchy? Well, I wouldn't say uh, there wouldn't be a country. A country is nothing but an arbitrary line. It'll be a, for the freedom of travel. You wouldn't have okay, so uh, immigration issues. You wouldn't have any of this so stuff you think at, at all. This country, uh, whatever, whatever, yeah, 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 yeah. arbitrary should be anarchy? Uh, I think it should be a free and voluntary society. The freedom of interaction, the freedom to associate and disassociate. Then, then we lose like half our jobs because like all the people, like illegal immigration and all that. Immigrant, all right, so what is illegal immigration? Who, who, what does that mean? Okay. Like I'm from Bolivia, so I have a very good familiar okay, familiarity people, with people, people having people, to come people, over here. People who come over and want to become no, a citizen. No, not about yes. like the government, like they just come over because they want to like travel or whatever, like the reason that yeah. they came here. And they just stay here and they don't learn the language and they just don't do anything and they just. What do you mean they don't do anything? Who, who's like, telling no, you? That's, no, that's a just, very broad just, general just claim. Stuff, like, they just like, most of them just like don't like to learn the language and they just like to become like. They're, they're working, they're working for their families, they're working to have a, to provide a better system because the government over there has already tyrannized uh, the business's opportunity okay, there. come over here, but come over here legally. Well, but, but, well, the thing is, what does that mean legally? Uh, you're, like, you're human beings. You're yeah, like the government. Yeah, no, yeah you're human you're beings. Like you you're talking just, about earlier. You can't just fit in with, what do you call it? You can't just come in like blindly. You have to come in like absorb the culture. Yeah, like say I went like to okay. Amazon for example. Yeah. Without anyone knowing, I'd, I'd stick out like a sore thumb because I look way different than the people who are sure? already there. Yeah. They'd know I'm that I wasn't blood. from there. Sir? And what's wrong with that? Well, I you're, you're bringing different talents, you're bringing different skills, a different way of life, your own experience in history. They would welcome you because uh, you're well, a good person. I wouldn't person. be able to do anything like okay, that yeah, because not, not I don't un the they don't understand people. me, I don't understand them. You take, you take, you take. You take them from like their country or whatever, but you don't take like the whole population. What do you mean taking over the whole population? How can one person take over a whole population? Uh, not one person. I'm just saying like, like, it's like a lot of them just coming in. What do you mean a lot of them just coming in? Okay. Like, I'm trying to understand. Here, look, look. Like you from Mexico. Yeah. They're, they're just coming in like in truckloads and stuff. And they're trying to, and they're like taking over all the jobs and like what jobs are they and taking they build over? Like gangs and all of that and like. All right, all right, all right, let's define gangs. All right, at least let's go to something. Without a war on drugs, to be no such thing as gangs. You look at the you look at the prohibition, for example, uh, during uh, the yeah. late 1920s. That invited the mafia. You create an artificial pricing system for alcohol. You're going to invite a lot of criminal activity. You create a war on drugs. The, like the, a plant, the value of that plant goes up high, and you invite drug warfare. Most of the violence in this country are because of gangs, and that's gangs is because of the war on drugs. And there's no such thing as a war on drugs. Yeah. You don't see a cannabis being handcuffed and thrown into a cage, right? No. It's a war on people, yeah. right? So without, you look at Portugal, 10 years ago, they decriminalized all their drugs. They didn't make illegal or illegal heroin, cocaine, ecstasy. First few years alone, drug usage went down. Uh, the diseases associated with that went down. You know, these people needed help because they were addicted. They didn't need cages. So you'll find when you remember you move government out of that system, things go back to a natural equilibrium. Things go back to a natural way that, ha that it should be. Yeah. You know, you look, so that's the direction I want to go, right? I want to turn to our community and find solutions that doesn't require throwing them into a cage. It doesn't require guns, you know, to force people to do something, you know? I mean, you guys tell me in your day-to-day -day lives you don't use violence to solve problems, right? Yeah. So let, let's kind of keep spreading that. When I mean, violence comes, yeah. we use violence. Right, self-defense of yourself or others yeah. from the initiation, right? Yeah. And, and that's the point I want to go to, right? It's, you can't just say state violence is bad 
but the violence we do to each other is okay. You kind of have to universalize it, right? You know, um, so that's the point I want to go to. And, and this has to extend to children too. I mean, let's, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to judge anyone. My mother used to spank me too. She used to beat me with the chocote, you know, with the horse whip. So the thing is, yeah, I looked, I talked to my mother and said, what, how, what was your childhood like? And it was very depressing to hear. You know, that was the handbook that she was giving. She's just repeating the cultural norms. She's just repeating the same handbook that was given to her by her parents. And she realized that it was wrong. She realized that, that she shouldn't have done that because it made her more of an angry person. That's the only way she knew how to, how to take care of children. All right. All right. So I'm just trying to say, let's let's start finding a better direction. All right. Let's let's find better solutions. All right. Sounds good. Right? Yeah. All right, man. Here's the uh, other pamphlets if you guys are interested. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure. My name is Cal. Hi, my name's Abdullah. 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 Mazen. Pleasure to meet you guys. Pleasure to meet you guys. Have a good day. Yeah. You guys take care. Take good care. Use of violence to solve any kind of problem versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a logical train of thought. Thank you. Thank you. Do you so think, what are your um, thoughts? I mean, do you think that necessarily means the government itself is immoral, or do you think you could just change the way that we govern things? Right. I mean, like, even, is, yeah, go ahead. is violence implicit in government? It is. What I'm asking. Yeah, it because is. It, because the thing is, even if you have like a like a great idea, you still need to extort everyone's money uh, to fund that idea. You can't you know, like versus like running a Kickstarter campaign, yeah, right? Sure. Or asking like or going for donations. Hey, I had this great idea, but you realize. The thing is, that why, why it's so difficult sometimes is because government has a monopoly on a lot of services that they force on us, that you can't cancel and subscribe. They have a monopoly on roads, they have a monopoly on schools, on first class mail, on security, on judges, on, 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 uh, on law. They have a monopoly on that town that you can't cancel, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to compete. Hey, this is a harmful, abusive service, I'm going to have the freedom to compete and provide a better service. Alright, I gotta take this. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. your time. ...of non-violent solutions that you and I already share to solve our problems. <laughs> right? Touche, sir. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think you basically just put it out uh, exactly how it is, but I think that you have to have some sort of law. We can, we can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers arbitrary dictating how oh, best yeah. our lives to live. We can have communities of preferences, all right, but they have a monopoly on law. All right, instead of a, having a polycentric legal system, we can have an apartment complex across the street that's work 20 friendly, one right across the street from that that's not. You know, we can have these communities. Right, it would never work it because I feel that uh, more people that are prone to violence would be coming into the other neighborhoods. Uh, what do you mean prone to violence? One more people, like gangs, for example? Yeah, well, per se. Yeah. All, right, all right, well, gangs, for example, the only reason they come in is because it's, it's illegal, right? You look yeah, at the they prohibition. Make, they, make, they make money off of. Right, there's an artificial things. increase in that drug because it's illegal and they come in just like a prohibition invited a mafia. Uh, the war on drugs invites all the gangs to come over because there's a high demand for it because the value of it is so high because there's, uh, the government has made it illegal. But you look at places like in Portugal, they decriminalized all their drugs. They yeah. didn't make it legal, but they also didn't make it illegal. And the drug usage rates for people using these drugs went down. The uh, diseases associated with them went down from heroin, cocaine, ecstasy. Per rate per capita, there's more uh, people here, more cocaine users here than there are marijuana users in uh, Portugal. Because in reality, there's no such thing as a war on drugs, it's a war on people. Yeah. It's a war on, on preferences, on a victimless crime. That's Reagan's fault. Yeah, it's Reagan's fault, but that's, that's <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah, Reagan's fault, but that's, that's the way it's Obama's kind of pushing it too, you know, and so. Um, so that's the thing, it's like politics is not going to set us free. I don't want to be 80 years old still holding a sign begging to be free, yeah. begging for my freedoms. And for me, I'm just trying to encourage this dialogue to kind of turn to our community to solve our problems and turn away from government, right? Also size the political rulers, right? Now, they haven't done nothing to, to help our lives, no, done, done nothing to protect our, our life and our living and our property. And uh, kind of going in that direction, that from that, that which only knows how to solve problems that compromises our own values already to begin with. We can still have security, but that's the thing of it. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on judges, on courts. They have a monopoly on roads, on schools. They even have a monopoly on the currency. You're not allowed to trade in any other currency except for the dollar. If you try to, the IRS will find you and throw you into a cage. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's I a guy. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that. There's a guy who tried to create his own currency called the Liberty Dollar a few years ago. IRS came, seized all his assets, threw him in a cage. There's, yeah, there's even a monopoly in first class mail. <laughs> I got a letter in the mail yesterday. It said IRS on the no. yeah. Right, they, they right. Get... How did you feel about that? Was it cringing? <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Right? It was horrible. Luckily, it was, uh, it was actually a check coming to me. Right. Me, but, dude, you see me looking at that. Yeah, yeah. If, if you got oh, one. Stress levels went way higher. 
That says that's just tell you something inherently how that feels to have a government then, right? Yeah. It doesn't make you feel any good at all. I mean, even if they, you get back some tax credit or refund, that's, they're giving a small percentage of what they've really stolen from you. Exactly. You know, 40, 50% of your income, gone. Yeah. Right? So it's like, yeah. and then they give you back, you know, maybe a, a quarter from what they've stolen here. Make you feel <laughs> good about it. Right? Yeah. But you made a good point. Yeah, the, the letter from the IRS versus like if you got a letter from like uh, Google, for example, you're like, all right, what? Well, well, What's, What's going up, on here? Yeah. yeah, did I win a free <laughs> iMac or something? Yeah. <laughs> so analytical AdSense, I don't know, but um, but you know if you got one from like um, from from a regular business like Apple, you know if there's something good in it. Oh yeah. You're not afraid from that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's another thing about mail. No one likes getting mail usually. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. Really getting mail, like oh, fuck, you're fucking getting mail. Unless, unless you're before like ages like 15, you're like. Sweet mail. It's always like a birthday card or something. Right, right, right. Good day. But now it's just like ah, junk. Yeah, that's all they deliver now. Trash bills. Yeah, government tyranny through there. Exactly. Yeah, pleasure. Uh, One last thing then. Uh, Has us some pamphlets. The philosophy that uh, all this is about is called anarchy. Okay. Uh, So by definition, like in science, anions and canons, an means without. Archy means rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, arbitrary deciding, strangers, and dictating how your life and what kind of things you can put in your own body. You know, yeah. we don't need those people. Yeah. Right? Cool, man. All right, man. It's a pleasure to meet you then. I'm Cal. Ryan, man. Ryan, pleasure, man. Take good care. That's the, the immorality of it. It, it tricks yes. us into compromising our values. Thank so, you. what are your thoughts? What are my thoughts on government? Period? Yeah. Or any ways, so maybe a grievance or any way that, um, or up from this conversation, or ways that government has kind of intruded and robbed well, you of I your think, happiness? I think we need less government. We need more freedoms. Exactly, yeah. And I don't, yeah, exactly. Well, I think America stands, stands out compared to other countries, still. In what uh, way? I mean, we have the, uh, the United States has the largest uh, prison uh, prisoners than any other country in the world. Correct. So, yeah, yes. we stand up and be number one is something finally. Well, and that's kidnapping we, and because, caging. Because America has so many people, too. Well, I mean, I mean well, but China has more people than the than United States, and still we oh. outnumber them. So India the has more population, the billions, and still the United States outnumbered them. So, population is not much of a <laughs> dis- yes. discerning. Con- oh, that's just, that's just the way things are, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, a lot of people go to jail or prison for some minor offenses, and then they turn into worse, worse criminals. Yeah, a large majority of them That's are actually happens. victimless crimes. Even, for instance, for smoking weed, I mean, yeah. people could still get arrested and go to jail for that. Even though I don't, I just know that it's, I mean, I just think that it should be decriminalized. Yeah, exactly, like in yes. Portugal, they decriminalized all their drugs 10 years ago. Portugal, Heroin. Czech Republic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and things got better. Things improved. You didn't have this massive influx of people running around yeah. shooting up heroin. Uh, and that's, the, that's where I want to go. We can have communities of preferences. We can have rules. Well, I see you're into... I'm anarchy. So anarchy, by definition, yes. means without rulers. We can have rules. We just don't need political rulers arbitrating strangers, mm-hmm. arbitrarily dictating how lives should be best run. Well, I'm not sure if you know anything about Nestor Machno from the beginning of 20th century. Don't lie to me. Uh, you know him, right? No. Nestor Machno. Um, he tried to create an anarchist republic. It's, uh, if you think of it, it was Eastern Ukraine. And it lasted for probably around, around a year or so. Yeah. So if you look more into that, uh, you can understand how it works, probably. I mean, the thing is, people should start with their own community and build their ways up, I guess. Out, yeah. So if we started even with, I guess, this community of uh, BCU, for instance, it should start with the community. Exactly. Thank you. That's where I want to go. I want to turn to our community to solve our problems and turn away from government. Do the transition, opt out, you know, uh, ostracize the political rulers and, and start building our community with the interactions. Mm-hmm. If we don't use violence here, let, let's ostracize those so we know how to use violence over there. There's an old anarchist uh, saying, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to cuss. Please, yeah, Am please, I? please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think locally, fuck globally. Think locally, fuck globally. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that's the way things should be. Well, where, where do your interests, I guess, in anarchism come from? Because, uh, well, I guess. I was always interested in less government, and I've been reading a lot about anarchism, but well, especially the Russian, a Russian wave of uh, what's his name, Nicholas Kropotkin. Uh, okay, I think actually now I remember yes. the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, even Tolstoy. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't an anarchist, but some some, some of his ideas were. There's a lot of similar sentiments that, that have been said. Yes. Um, right. Yeah, and that's the direction I want to go. Again, I guess like supporting human rights is a part of it too. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's, that's really wonderful to hear. Uh, well, let me give you some pamphlets then before oh, uh, you. you head out. So, uh, pamphlet on anarchy, mm -hmm. <laughs> volunteerism, and peaceful parenting. Thank you. Uh, so, again, for me, it's like this is, you can't just say this is against the state violence. It has to be all of it, right? right. Including the violence we do to each other and the violence we do to children. Correct. And uh, kind of universalize, otherwise, it's a preference, mm -hmm. right? So, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Cal. My name is Vlad. Vlad? Pleasure to meet you, man. Uh, we do monthly freedom gatherings. I guess anarchist uh, philosophical discussions. Uh, there's one next uh, two Fridays from now. It's like mm -hmm. less than a five minute bike ride from here. It's on our website, so you definitely should check it what out. What's the website? Uh, Liberate RBA. Yeah, it's also on the panel. The problem too. is that people think of anarchism as something very bad. They do, but I have no problem actually actually helping people understand uh, the true meaning behind that. It's somewhat close to a libertarian movement, somewhat, but not quite. No, yeah, for me, I find libertarianism to be a pothole on the road to freedom. Uh, oh. You know, yeah, I'd rather go to the finish line to anarchy mm -hmm. and not talk about libertarianism. I'm not. I mean, the thing is, they still think they could do it to politics. They still mm -hmm. think you can. Uh, it's kind of like trying to infiltrate um, an organization that's founded in violence and overturn it against that which that only knows how to use. Yeah. You know, it's like well, anarchism just like libertarianism. Uh, libertarianism has like a very social base, so it's maybe somewhat socialist based. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah. variety, but uh, yeah, but as long as it has to be voluntary, you can live in preferences different kinds of communities mm -hmm. as long as it's voluntary it's like look i don't like this community i want to go to this community instead right you but anyway uh, look up the nestor no no we'll do, we'll do. it was the only country that existed well under anarchism basically where people decided what they want to do i think i've heard of this place i think uh it was a small community. Right? Yeah, it was a yeah. real. It, it was just like one city, basically. Yeah, 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 it yeah, yeah. Like from 1917 till 1918. Right I think uh, the government came in and kind of just. Well, the Bolsheviks came in and uh, right. took over the Ukrainian part of the right, right, right. Russian Empire. So. I know that's. I know, definitely have to check that out. Yeah. All right, man. Pleasure right, to meet luck. you again. Yeah. Take good care. Yeah, good luck, guys. It's the hidden violence and immorality of government. It only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way. And that's where the threat of and use of violence to solve any kind of problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three already share, you know, in our own community. So it contradicts that which we already have uh, a, a value against. So what, what are your thoughts on that? I think what you said makes perfect sense. Like, it really does. I'm not big on government. Yeah, in yeah. Place, so. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, and for me, it's like we, we can still have rules. There's just no need. For political rulers arbitrarily dictating and deciding how best our own lives should be run right we can have communities of preferences we can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly one right across the street that's not right and the thing is you recognize the inherent violence of government and you realize the government has a monopoly on a lot of services that they force on us that you can't cancel and subscribe they have a monopoly on first class mail they have a monopoly on roads on school on security on judges on courts Right? It's not like Netflix where they try to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. But, uh, right? And they don't allow you to have the freedom of a competition to provide a better service, of course, or security that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people that are paying their salaries. Right? And that's the inherent violence of government that they have a monopoly on a lot of these services that they force at you at gunpoint to, to pay for. And you don't have no freedom to escape or to, to create something better than that. That's true. I feel like. Um there's a lot of safety and security in that, or like supposed safety and security, but um, I feel like the more people you have to govern, the harder it's going to be to keep it from being corrupt or being a defunct kind of system. Right. Because we're such a big country, it, I don't, it's just not working out. Yeah, and I, I would say, yeah, and that's kind of the, the inevitability of any kind of kind of government becomes eventually unsustainable I mean even in the end you know Frodo uh, couldn't let go of that political power couldn't let go of the ring right so you know political power corrupts anyone who kind of wields it and uses it um, you know there's science out there that shows that there's an interesting uh, connection with people who are addicted to cocaine and people who are, connect who are addicted to political power and it leads to that kind of uh, corruption <laughs> so it's hard for them to let go of controlling other people's lives and you know, in that matter so, uh, oh, I guess this philosophy I'm here that I'm uh, talking about is called anarchy. By uh, definition, it means, um, like in science, it means uh, anions and canons. So, an means without, archy means rulers. So, we can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers. We're sitting on sitting council, uh, arbitrarily deciding, again, what, what we can put in our own bodies and not to. 
Let me get one for you too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, first and first. And um, so this is not just against state violence, you have to universalize it. So it's also against the violence we do to each other, and especially the children, you know, um, and kind of universalizing that so that way, uh, otherwise it becomes a preference, you know, um, and trying to, to get to a better place that's founded on real values. You know, the values that everybody share, right? Uh, like in the first three questions we were talking about, you know, we, we, we can be trusted to, to be good in, towards each other. We, we already have these voluntary interactions. And then again, there's just no need for, for a government that arbitrarily decides and uses only blood violence to, to force preferences onto other people. Yeah. All right, great. Well, well, thank <laughs> you. No, pleasure. My name is Cal. Oh, Erica. Erica, pleasure to meet you, Erica. Kate. Kate. Kate, pleasure to meet you too. All right. All right. Good luck. Have, have a fun weekend. You too. <laughs> Well, hopefully you enjoy this content. I uh, met a lot of new people here talking about, uh, I guess, anarchism in a way they've never heard about it before. And, and uh, even saying that makes perfect sense. And so uh, even, even someone who's have a background history in a lot of this, especially in the uh, Russian history area of anarchism. And of course, to kind of bring it back to here in Richmond, we're, we're kind of presenting, creating a new form of anarchism. It has uh, a lot of associations, but really no ties. This is a brand new form of anarchism that doesn't stop at the state level, but stops at even the violence we do to each other. And most importantly, the violence is done to children and so trying to universalize that in a way that anarchism hasn't done it before and trying to create a new brand of it and the way that we market it and the way that we discuss about it and the way we uh, spread this message to each other so hopefully you enjoy this content and please share subscribe and, and donate if you please can um, so fun more equipment and to keep doing this and coming out there too as well so take good care and liberate rva